What's up guys? I'm back. Um, I can't stay long. I want to do a really quick video while I'm in the middle of cooking dinner for my kids and while they're occupied. I just want to talk about something really quick. Now, I was just watching a video about, um, it was like a TED Talks video, which I don't really watch those, but someone recommended it to me and I just started kind of watching them. And I just watched this one video where this woman was talking about how people who have been through childhood trauma are way more likely to have health issues. And I've always kind of known that anyway because it's happened to me. Now, I'm a Pisces and Pisces are very much prone or more prone to sickness, I guess. Pisces are very prone to sickness. We get sick easily somehow. Um, I, I don't get sick a lot as far as like cold sick like I get colds all the time no it's not the case but I do have other random health issues that you know kind of magnify for me like even as a child I was always sick because my mother of course she gave me dairy we all grew up on dairy because we didn't know any better but either way I was very very prone to being sick now um, the video helped me realize more and more how childhood trauma really does put you at risk for more issues, more health issues. You're very, very much higher at risk and I, like I said, I kind of knew that anyway, but hearing it and hearing the facts behind it and the science behind it makes a lot more sense. She was saying how, you know, the degrees she got in psychology and the degrees she got in certain topics did not amount to what she learned when she realized that, you know, the core problem is, you know, childhood trauma, the core problem of majority of these people's issues, majority of children's issues, you know, when children are acting up at school and, you know, they just seem traumatized and you can kind of tell. So, it's just kind of enlightening, I guess, a little bit more enlightening and also sad because, you know, doctors don't really know what to do. With traumatized people, they generally don't know what to do. They just give you the same diagnosis as everybody else. Most of them, they don't want to get to the root of the problem. They ignore the root problem. They just want to give you a medication to patch it up. But, you know, you really can't patch it up. This is something that's going to be with you forever. And it's just rough. It's rough on people who deal with this. It's rough on <clears throat> anybody who's had childhood trauma. And, um... I don't know. It's, it's just... It was very informational and, you know, good to hear, you know, it's really good to hear and, again, sad because, you know, I have a couple of health issues that have been popping up in my life for the last, say, maybe two, three years, some I've been had, um, you know, I don't talk about them that much because it's nothing like super serious or it hasn't been. But just lately, it's, it has been, like, I've been having, like, huge blood pressure spikes. And I don't even eat salt like that anymore. I've drastically decreased my diet since being on this fitness journey. You know, I'm not overweight. I'm trying to lose weight anyway, but I'm not, like, overweight. I'm not obese at all. <laughs> I'm just trying to lose excess baby weight. So, you know, I don't have no extreme extra weight on me, you know. I'm not huge. But even so, I'm still prone to high blood pressure. I'm, I've already started having like certain thyroid issues. I've started having, well, I've been had back pain probably because I've had a lot of kids and I don't get to see a chiropractor. Um, I have lots of other chronic pains that pop up every now and then. I have pains around my neck a lot of times. And um, I don't know, it's just a lot. Like I have shoulder pain, y'all. I have. I constantly have sore muscle spasms in my shoulders. Like my muscles are hella tense. Like they're always very, very tense. They're extremely tense. I remember last year, I think, or the beginning of this year, when I finally got a massage. Someone paid to give me a massage, and um, the guys who were massaging my shoulders, they couldn't believe how tense I was. Like my shoulders are like rocks. They were looking at each other, like, "Whoa, okay, what is going on?" But you know, they were speaking another language, so you know. Not like I could explain or anything, but I knew that. I know my shoulders are like fucking rocks sometimes. No, not sometimes. All the time. My shoulders stay sore. They say that's another symptom of childhood abuse. Another symptom of, you know, PTSD, anxiety, all of that. The, the pain just for some reason collects in your shoulders. And I don't know why, but it does. Perhaps that's why my neck is always in pain. I'm not sure. 
but that's just part of it. You know, I have a lot of chronic pains. But like I said, I don't come up here and talk about that a lot because I don't want to seem like I'm complaining. I don't want to seem like, you know, oh, I'm dying. I'm not dying. I'm just going through stuff. <laughs> you know, I'm going through lots of pains and things that I can't really help right now. So I'm definitely trying to get my health on track. I'm definitely getting more in shape. I'm definitely losing my excess weight. If you guys do not follow my fitness Instagram, you should go follow it. If you care, if you um, want to help me get on this fitness journey or um, let me motivate you, you know, stuff like that. Um, we can do that. But all in all, I'm suffering from a lot of physical things that I shouldn't be suffering from. I have a lot of random health problems that I should not be dealing with. And like I said, me watching that video just kind of brought it more to light. And, you know, it just made me think about some more things. It just gave me a bigger reason to try to get in shape because before when I was not getting in shape, when I was being sedentary, extremely sedentary, it was worse. Y'all, like, you couldn't even imagine. My pains were way worse, of course, and going through five pregnancies. Are you kidding me? I was fucked up. You know, my legs, I had, like, a lot of swelling in my legs. Like, my legs, for some reason, my body holds water, like, no tomorrow. And it all goes down to my legs. My legs, for some reason, have some kind of lymphomic issue where as soon as I eat a lot of salt, I my legs swell up. My legs, hands, and feet swell. Not like abnormally to where, oh my god, what happened to your hand? Um, they just swell, you know? If I eat too much sodium, too much of that processed sodium, they just swell. My hands and feet swell really bad. And then when I drink water, it just holds it there. It just retains all the water. And it's like it's hard as hell for me to sweat. That's why I have to work out now. I have to make sure I sweat, y'all. I have to make sure I sweat more to um, rid myself of the excess salt. I have to. Like, I'm gonna fucking kill myself if I don't, you know? And I know my family, particularly my father's side of the family, are prone to a lot of these issues, a lot of these diseases, because a lot of them either have the disease or I know they're probably on their way to having it. Some, you know, in the past have already died from certain things. They just have not been the healthiest, so I have to take care of myself, knowing that I've been through trauma as well. They've probably been through trauma too, which made it worse. They probably have. But, like I said, me knowing more now, doing lots of research about traumatized people and how we handle things and how our bodies handle things. Like, our bodies just keep all the trauma. Our bodies just keep using, or keep, not using, what's the word? I can't even think of the word, y'all, but our bodies hold on to trauma our bodies hold on to physical pain i guess so like i said i have to make sure that i move i have to make sure that i eat well i have to make sure that i don't eat too much processed salt because it's serious that shit's serious i'm, I'm only 32 and sometimes i feel like i'm fucking 60 like where are these pains coming from and i can't go down like that i can't let myself go down like that so if you are a victim, or a survivor, however you label yourself, work on your health. Make sure you work on your health. Make sure you work on moving more. Make sure you are not just focusing on going to the gym and just, you know, exercising your booty, getting your booty gains going. Because that's, for some reason, that's just a big thing these days. Women, all they care about is getting that ass popping. I'm like, really? It's way more to life than that? Come on. Stop putting your ass in the camera. I don't know, that kind of irritates me, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off topic, but like I said, take care of yourself. Take care of your outer body. Take care of your inner body. Make sure you meditate. Make sure you breathe. Make sure you go to bed on time as much as possible. And focus on inner healing and outer healing. Because... We are more prone to everything. We're more prone to heart disease. We're more prone to people with depression, anxiety, PTSD, CPTSD, all of that. We're more prone to everything. We're more prone to every fucking disease that's out there. So, just because of how the million times our body has had to go through that fight or flight response, we're just more prone to it because our brains are just messed up like that. That's just how it is. And, you know, like I said, hearing the science behind it, it was just wonderful to know and wonderful to... You know just study so like I said if you are if you are a survivor make sure you take care of yourself do not let yourself get overweight do not let yourself get obese um, work out as much as you can do a little bit of movement every day if you can and even that alone would help just try to keep your spirits up and 
just be careful. Because like I said, we are more prone to dying early. We're more prone to every disease in the world. We're more prone to cancer. We're more prone to just everything that even probably exists. You know, we re we're even more prone to sex uh, STDs, I heard. I'm like, what? I mean, that's, <laughs> that's what it is, y'all. So, I just want to come here and say that. And um, I've got to get back to cooking. Um, yeah, cooking dinner. And, yeah, I'm going to finish off the rest of my day. It's been a long day for me. I've been homeschooling pretty much all day. Not all, well, off and on all day, like each child um, I've been working with, but yeah, I hope you take that as some food for thought, and if you want to know the video I was talking about, I'll probably leave a link in the description box below, If you, you can go and look, watch that video if you want, if you want more insight on it or whatever, it's just my personal opinion and just my little say-so on the side, you know, because that's what I do, <laughs> so um, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Hey y'all, I'm back. I'm back because I did a little, little bit more research on the topic I previously talked about. About um, abused people being more prone to be ill. So I went to this particular website trying to look for my ACE score. Because that's one thing the woman talked about in the video. There, there's something called ACE score. I think it's called Adverse Childhood something. It stands for ACE. It's basically an acronym and I went and googled it and I took the quiz. There's a quiz you can take to see how what your ACE score is. So mine is 6. So basically mine is considered bad because it's 5 and up. Now I'm going to put the results somewhere in this video so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, my my um, chances of getting certain sickness are higher, way higher, like doubled or tripled and just they're just significantly higher. So. I just want to bring light to this test. This is an interesting way of trying to figure out how much help you need or trying to figure out how bad your situation is and perhaps getting you to, you know, go get some help or just tell, be, you, you'll be able to tell a doctor or, or a psychiatrist more about your situation if you take this test, you know, based on your symptoms, you know. Maybe it'll actually help you out. So, um, you guys should go um, Google ACE test, or just put in ACE, I think the ACE test, or what did I Google, hold on, shit. I did mine from a website called Stop Abuse Campaign, now they probably have others, but again, my score was 6, and that's considered high, so, um, if you want to go check that out, you can, it's free, you can go do the test, it's really quick, you know, um, might give you some more insight, might give you some resources to look at, or, you know, anything, but, I think it's interesting because I've never seen this, I've never heard of this, and me just watching that video brought light to it, so that's pretty cool that they have things like that now, you know? I, I um, enjoy knowing that, so I'm here to bring you these types of things, so there you go. If you want to go look it up, go ahead and do so, and yeah, let me know what your score was, let me know why you think you have a certain score, or you know, anything. Let me know anything down in the comment box, and we can, you know, talk about it. So yeah, thanks for watching guys, peace out.